Hey folks, my name is Chris Wessel, and today we're going to be tying the Betty Jane fly. Alright, we're going to start off with our hooks. We're using the Arex HR410, which is their salmon wet fly iron. And we're going to start with some black thread. Love the shape of these hooks. All right, I'm going to go to some extra small oval tinsel. And where we also have a colored butt on here, we're going to just do a few wraps. I bring my thread up usually to where the butt will be on the body. Then I'll snip this off. All right, now we are going to put on some uh, chartreuse. Always leave a little bit of fabric, or um, sorry, floss hanging out. Uh, like most tires uh, that tie salmon flies, um, that's to accommodate uh, putting a hood over your butt and um, keeping everything secure when you're fishing it. Basically stops the floss from uh, slipping down over your tinsel in the back. Great for longevity of your fly. And you just pull that down over and tie it in. Now we're going to put on a uh, red pheasant crest for a tail. I, uh, I, to be honest with you, I, I, I could care less about having a tail on my fly. I think they're pointless, but trying to follow the pattern to what it's supposed to be so in respect to the person that tied it or came up with this fly i will add it in all right ah, i can do better than that another one out here now so I just usually when I'm preparing my tails I just take it by the tip and strip everything back you may have a pretty cool way of doing prepping your tails I'd love to hear it Oops. Now we're going to put in some size small oval where this is a number six body. You need to have a little bit bigger oval for the tinsel. And you come up to around halfway up this portion and you are going to put some green floss in there. Again, I'm using glow bright. Now we won't be, uh, we're not gonna, what am I doing here? We're not gonna be hooding this, so. And this pattern really resembles a lot uh, of the same traits that a green Highlander has, which is a 
pretty good pattern on our local rivers here in Newfoundland. I've seen this in a book and kind of stood out to me. Usually I would have this green on a bobbin and I would have tied off my thread and just spun this really quickly. Uh, but I'm only tying one fly. Usually I'm tying 50 of the same pattern. How's that look on your guys' side? Good enough? Yeah. All right. So that's that. The next step is to put our peacock on. I put peacock on a little bit different than I see other people do it. And peacock is such a brittle material. It, uh, if you have peacock on your fly, I find, and maybe it's just my personal experience, but it's usually the first thing to come off of a fly when you hook a fish. So I've started doing <clears throat> things a little bit differently with my peacock, and I'll show you how I do it now. It's a bit of a cheat, but that's all right. So I take a little bit of head cement, or today I'm using some Loctite, and I just put a little bit on the shank and basically that's going to stop that from unraveling if you hook fish should say when you hook fish should never be if go into it with when and even if a fish tears that up a bit it's still going to be stuck to the hook so All right, now we gotta bring our rib forward. Try to aim for five wraps, but <laughs> as my friend uh, Benoit has said before, the fish probably don't count the wraps on your fly. So, but I think five is a good round number. Nah, see, I'm gonna end up with more doing it that way. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this. Uh, trying to get the right amount of wraps, but we'll see how it goes on the second pass. And that ribbing is going to hold everything in place as well. All right. So we'll get rid of that. There, we got our body. So now we need to uh, make our throats. And one thing I've never gotten used to was I bought a, um, a Regal Revolution vise, and it's so easy to flip it over, but I had become accustomed to just tying in my throats like that. So I've never used my vise for turning it, turning it upside down to tie in a throat. Oh, I'll do it to cut it off, to cut off, trim it, but. All right, and then the pattern also calls for yellow in the throat. So I just kind of pick out roughly the same amount I just did with that. And you can play with that and tease it and kind of get it to where you want it. And you just size up where your other one is and I bring it up and tie in. All right. There we go. I'm going to tie that back a little bit too. And that will pretty much ruin it. Nice one. There, that's better. All right, so for our wing, we're doing gray squirrel. You can go to heck with this uh, material, but just think about it. When you're cutting it off, how much you're really gonna need. You don't need a lot. It fills in really nicely. Your materials will last you longer too. I 
I'm gonna put a little bit of wax on my thread. Squirrel tail tends to be a little bit slippery. And I try to kind of bring that up to the tips of the uh, red golden pheasant. And that's, that's kind of how I like my proportions to be. Let's trim off the access. So I'm in. Oftentimes I'll break that wing in half by cutting it with the thread and just tying it in in two separate pieces. But no need of that there now. And I always put in a little dab of uh, head cement or Loctite. And basically that turns your fly in into a bulletproof fly. The wing won't pop out. Yeah. All right. I'm just going to use my whip finisher wrong, but still works. Oh, what happened there? That's all right. All right, and that is the Betty Jane. Great little salmon fly from what I hear. So basically I'll coat this with one coat of either Loctite, which is what I'm using now, or head cement. I'll let it dry and then I've been using uh, Solarez uh, Thin Hard lately, which gives you this like really nice shiny head and it does it a lot quicker. So there's another tip for you. So that's the Betty Jane. Thank you guys very much for watching the video. I really appreciate uh, you stopping by. I really appreciate everybody that subscribed to the page and they like the videos. Uh, we will see you next time and thank you again.